Hello, Gorinches are on view yet again, this time for our sale on the 12th of February. Welcome to February, spring is coming. And what do we have for you? Well, how about the chance to preach from the pulpit? This uh, pine pulpit um, looks to be, it's certainly of age. It could be Edwardian a little bit later. You've got an adjustable lectern to the front um, and, a, and a seat at the back, actually, so you can have a sit down when other people are doing their bit. It's lot number 87. Hopefully it's not the star of this show, but it's, a, it's, it's an interesting thing and people do like these standout items, we hope. What else do we have for you? Well, I think on the 5th we've got a dovecot, not a particularly big one, and here's another one. They seem to be, they seem to be coming in thick and fast, lot 88, this white painted um, dovecot. Uh, there's curiosities such as this pine um, sideboard inset with the recessed brass handles, lot nine there. Um, as ever, we've always got a long case clock for you. There's a rather smart garden parasol, table and chairs. Look at the size of it, very good waffle. So even in the rain, you could be enjoying lunch, uh, sheltered. Uh, I think that's lot 80. Or in the snow, because well, there's. In the snow, a... they've put lot 80 <laughs> next to it, this uh, sledge, sledge as, yeah. as, as they will the, the wags. Um, so, otherwise, we're looking at things like mid, mid century dining table and chairs here. I think the chair at the front, I think this is an Urkel from memory, lot 50. It's what all the young people want these days, or so I'm told. And uh, equally, the um, table at the back it looks to be in really nice, clean condition. Let's have a look underneath the chairs. Um, no obvious clues there, but uh, I'm sure Dave's catalogued it accordingly. So an interesting mixture as ever. There are a few pots outside, so have a look at that. There's even a hollowed out tree trunk um, showing here, lot 12, and a pair of niches, which gives me the opportunity to say it's a bit of a niche market selling niches, but there we are, lot 16. These are um, plaster niches ready to set into uh, wherever you'd like to set them into really. Um, so as always an array of things but we'll go and see what's in the main cell room. So here we are in the main cell room and uh, all sorts of curiosities as ever. How about lot number 269 as a studio pottery vase there. It was quite interesting. Lots of there's a seal mark to the base. Always lots of interest in studio pottery these days. With it you get this uh, Rather finely potted, very thin and delicate bowl that's got some little impressed mark there. So some curious studio wares for you. Uh, silhouettes, um, don't see as many of those as we used to. These stand out really just for having being all original. So you've got, um, sometimes they're cut paper, sometimes they're painted straight onto plaster, which I think is the case here. Then eglamise glazing around the outside and then the embossed brass frame beyond that so all original framing which is rare we don't have a trade label that was quite normal to have one on the back um no not it's not present on any of those but they're definitely there's a pair there and then a related one here uh where we've got the name of the sitter dorothy cooper um someone said circa 1890 it's it's, it's older than that i would say anyway that's not 270 some silhouettes for you often talked about on the antiques roadshow coco de mares um, they, they, they get very excited about them. Um, this one has been turned into a double bowl, I suppose, uh, and is relatively modest in size, I have to say. Lot 266. More Murano glassware. They keep coming because there's a good collection of these and they're being fed in every week, 265 being one of them. Something more uh, contemporary, a little bit more. Jonathan Chiswell Jones, JCJ Pottery, based near Lewis. Lot 272, the luster dish, just pretty, pleasing thing. Uh, rolling backwards, looking from left to right. Um, there's quite an ornate clock there. That, that's all going on, in fact. We've got, um, in fact, the sort of thing that really looks like it ought to be in the fine cell. Well, we've got a nice, and a clock. we've got a timepiece here. Right. We've got a compass set to the top. And we've got a barometer around there with Thornhill, but of Paris. Um, rather smart thing. And then this, this sort of ratchet system at the base, which sort of suggests that it might well move. It certainly sort of rotates to some extent, or perhaps just giving it more of that sort of nautical feel. Nice clock that may get moved to the fine cell, actually, but for now it is lot number 257. Uh, some Bollinger, if you, if you, Valentine's Day is coming. 
to uh, make yourself very happy or, or console yourself with your losses. Uh, three bottles there, uh, lot 255. Otherwise, uh, oh, this is fun, isn't it? Lot 251. Look at that, a great piece of design. This is the Cube Teapot, it's a bit of a design classic. Um, we know that because it says underneath, The Cube. Mm -hmm. um, sole manufacturers in metal, um, Cube Teapots Limited of Leicester. And then just really, really clever. Yes, it's a perfect cube and it's got various features. Look at the way the spout's been done so it pours properly. The integrated handle with a thumb piece. Um, and then perforations here, presumably to try and keep it a bit cooler so the handle doesn't get quite so hot. Just great fun. Lot 251 there. Um, and then over here, let's have a look. A few artworks. So this is Gene Camp, lot 667. Name pops up occasionally. Um, relatively contemporary painter in watercolour, just a sort of pretty kitchen windowsill, quite literally kitchen windowsill picture there, lot 667. And sitting next to it, um, quite a nice sort of continental oil newest it's signed lot 666 number of so uh, there we go selection of smalls for you rolling round yes sorry was that yes rolling around here and going around behind the counter um an array of silver what can we pick out to show you how about a pair of candelabra lot 826 good solid weight to them they're not loaded they have a nice substance to them in that classic sort of George 1, George 2 style. Um, and then we've got photographs, frames, we've got christening cans, trinket dishes, a rather huge, I'll pull this out to show you, moving an MBE out the way as we do, a rather large um, silver mounted cold drinks jug, cut glass, uh, Mappin and Webb, round about 1904, I would say, Sheffield, not 847, and nice big, big monogram on it. 1897, the date there, suggesting it might be a little earlier than I've said. Um, but there we go, nice big lump of silver there. And there's, there's more, it sort of continues onwards, so have a good look at the silver. Over the back here, the usual mixture of curiosities, um, but of note, a number of items by Lynx of London and quite a few lots of sort of costume and other jewellery. So again, have a look through those, but we're now going to look at the jewellery. So in Roger's cavern, otherwise known as the strong room, we have a, a good selection, a nice lot there. I'm thinking there are, ooh, it looks to me like there are a good 70, 60, 70 lots of jewellery. Nice mixture there. In amongst them, and I've been reminded to remind you, Valentine's Day, 14th of January, February. <laughs> oh, gosh. 14th February, it's obviously on my mind, I'm thinking about it all the time. Um, 14th of February, uh, the sale is the 12th of February. Yeah? Yeah? Convenient, or what? So, what could you um, possibly think of for a, a, a Valentine's gift? How about lot 921? Pretty little old cart diamond ring. Not big, but just pleasingly nice. Estimate three to four hundred pounds. Alternatively, 922 ruby and diamonds set into gold bracelet. It does open, it's hinged. Estimate two to three hundred, perhaps a little more, but that's the estimate there to be bought at. Um, I mentioned links of London, a number of lots of links in London come in from a, from a lady's collection. Here we are, look rather nice. This, um, Diamond chip set um, necklace with matching bracelet, lot 957. Have a look at the Lynx lots. Something sort of funky stylish, looks quite sort of 70s in design, is lot 946, sapphire and diamond with that interesting cross structure. Look at it side on. Um, bit like sort of Grima um, in style and design. That's estimate three to 400. A watch, how about a watch? Nice Rolex there, ladies Rolex. Good stylish case to it. Those nice sort of angular lugs give it a bit of style. That is lot number 975, two to 300 estimate. But if you're worried about how it's all gonna go, how about a Tiffany & Co silver worry bean? Lot 941, and you can just sort of worry away 
but very stylishly with lot 941. <laughs> Last but not least, forgetting Valentine's and just let's get down to business. Here's a nice rummage lot. We do like a rummage lot, don't we? To look, 937, what are we going to get? We're going to get a an eyeglass with a bit of missing there, but you've got a nice bit of in blue enamel showing there um, in sort of gold overlay. A same again, a, a, an antique, probably 1820, 1830 uh, watch key with a sort of gold overlay. A memorial brooch in jet, I guess, around the edge, almost purpley black that. Um, there's a little base metal drum fob and base metal locket. There's a Victorian gem set, looks like amethyst from here, um, and probably gold, though very thin and light brooch. There's not a gold brooch, that's a bit of costume jewellery, but hanging from its chain is a rather pretty and nice, I would say, garnet set memorial brooch. We're still going on. Gosh, how marvellous. Look, here's a little fob. It was a watch key. It's lost the top of its key there, um, set with a foil stone and turquoise. Um, a, a sort of guard safety brooch with chain, two piece. And last but not least, um, I was going to speculate on who this was, but very helpful. It says on the back that it's Pascal. So a uh, cameo brooch of Pascal, all in lot 937. Great rummage lot. So there we go. As ever, lots to look at here. Come and have a look. Come and have a rummage. It's um, it's always good fun. February's here. Everyone's feeling a bit more buoyant, I think we can say. So uh, we look forward to uh, to seeing you. Thank you very much.